Before we begin, this is a reminder that this is a remote meeting and teleconference using Zoom pursuant to 1 MRSA section 403-A. Welcome to the Sanford Planning Board's meeting for April 21st, 2021. This meeting will come to order. This is a public proceeding and unless the board specifically votes to go into executive session, you have the right to hear everything that is being said and to look at all the exhibits that are offered. Please notify the chair if you are unable to see or hear something. Please know that if any planning board members have any potential conflicts of interest of which they are aware, they will disclose the conflict prior to the board initiating a hearing or action on an application. All persons speaking in the public hearing will be asked to state their name and address and then proceed. At the sole discretion of the chair, public testimony may be limited to five minutes per speaker. For each item, the applicant will be asked to describe the project. Thereafter, the chair will ask the proponents of the project to speak, followed by opponents in, and those who are neither for nor against, but who may want to ask a question or make a general comment. Everyone who wants will have an opportunity to speak to the board through the chair. Any questions going to and through the chair will then decide at what point to either ask staff or the applicant to respond. The chair may wait until after the testimony has concluded to seek answers to any questions that are raised by the public or board members. Please note that any rudeness, so uncivil behavior, clapping, cheering, booing, etc., will not be tolerated. And if those behaviors occur, the chair, at his discretion, may terminate the hearing and reschedule it for another day. In addition, the chair, at his discretion, will limit repetitious comments. It was entirely appropriate for an individual to indicate that he or she agrees with the previous speaker. Prior to closing the public hearing, the chair will ask if there are any new comments, and the applicant will be allowed to make a single rebuttal in response to the testimony which was provided. Once the public hearing portion of the meeting is closed, the chair will accept no additional public comment. However, a member of the board at the chair's discretion may ask the applicant or a member of the public to respond to a question. This will not reopen public comment. Planning board decisions are based solely on whether an applicant has provided sufficient evidence to meet the requirements of local, state, and federal laws. In this regard, public testimony is most effective when it considers the impact of a project in light of Sanford subdivision site plan shoreland zoning ordinances or other relevant regulations after the board votes on the merits of each project it will vote on written findings of fact since the findings may substantially affect any appeal rights and also as a matter of courtesy the board asks that those attend the meeting not leave until the board has adopted the findings for the project you are interested in after the plan board makes its final decision any reconsideration by the board must be made at its next regularly scheduled meeting if anyone wishes to appeal the board's final decision he or she must do so within 30 days City's ordinances and comprehensive plan are available for viewing on the city's website and in planning and development department's office at 919 Main Street. Remember, this is a public proceeding. You have the right to see and hear what is happening, and we welcome public participation. Okay. And that brings us to the next item on our agenda, which is the minutes for March 3rd, 2021. We have a motion to accept. Motion to accept. Second, Second Diane. Yeah, I heard Diane sneak in there first. And a roll call vote. Okay, uh, give me a second. I should have been doing this as I went along. Um, hold on just a second and I will get myself prepared for this. Sorry about that, guys. All righty. Um, roll call. Uh, Lenny? Yes. Jack? Yes. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. And Tom? Yes. Joe is um, excused and is Crystal here? Molly, please, uh, if you could just keep an eye on that and let me know if and when she shows up so I can get her record into the minutes. I just got, I got a text from Crystal and she is not going to be here this evening. Okay, um, one, two, three, four, five. We have five members, um, Mr. Chair, we have a quorum. Okay, uh, vote for an affirmative, okay. Um, the next set of minutes is for April 7th, 2021. Um, do we have a vote to accept those? Motion to accept okay. those. Okay, and a second. Second, Diane. Okay, Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> you snooze, you lose, Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> 
Sorry, I, I'm being a little flippant tonight. I'm sorry. It was a late night last night. <laughs> Are you ready for a roll call? Sure, let's do it. Okay, good. Lenny? Yes. Jack? I was not there. That's okay, right, too. thank you. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. Tom? Yes. That is 401 abstention. Okay. Yeah, and that brings us to hearings and business. So this is for new business. This is file R7-24D. This is Blueberry Ridge. It's a minor subdivision and minor site plan, private way. Care of Dana Libby Corner Post Land Survey. Uh, Beth, do you want to give us any background on this? Sure, mine will be very brief, and then I think um, Dana is, Libby is here this evening to make a presentation and to introduce his team. Um, <clears throat> so the applicant, which is um, uh, uh, Joe's, home, Joe's Home Improvement, um, is requesting approval for a minor subdivision and minor site plan uh, for the purposes of a private way. Um, to create a, a three-lot subdivision and the private way is intended um, uh, I believe the private way is intended to provide uh, necessary frontage. Um, the site plan review committee did review this project at its meeting yesterday, and they did make a recommendation for approval with a few conditions. Um, and the applicant um, uh, has been working very hard to address those conditions. Um, uh, we, you know, probably should leave those in place for the motion uh, just to give staff more uh, time to review those uh, those mo those modifications of the plan. Okay, sounds good. And with that, I'll declare the public hearing open. And Dana, it's, it's all yours, I guess. Okay, Dana Libby from Kona Post Lands of Bang, here representing uh, Joe's Home Improvement. And as uh, Beth indicated, they are seeking approvals for a three lot subdivision of a private way on the northwest side of Oak Street. Uh, all these lots will utilize uh, on site septic and uh, wells. Uh, it will utilize overhead electric to, from coming in from Oak Street. And the frontage will be from the private way. Uh, let me uh, share, share the screen here. So the blue areas on the plan are the mapped wetlands, and uh, we've avoided all the wetlands with the improvements. Um, there was there was an easement along the land out the private way uh, to the uh, uh, Sudley Butter Butler, uh, but the. Um, the Glants have gotten a, a release deed from Butler's, uh, releasing their rights in the easement. So there's no no more uh, outside rights to this property. Also, this uh, entrance required a DOT entrance permit, which we now have, and we'll be supplying the city with a copy of. Um, the uh, Atlantic Resource uh, Consultants has done the engineering on this, and. Uh, the engineering department has come up with a list of concerns. I think they've addressed some of them. Uh, the, the engineer from Atlantic Resource Consultants will be contacting uh, Matt to discuss the drainage, uh, his drainage concerns on the property. Um, other than that, I think that's pretty much it, and I'll take any questions. Okay. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Yes. Dana, is there anyone else on your um, uh, here from the applicant or, or any of the other uh, uh, consultants who worked on the project? Sorry, yes, uh, Melissa Glant is online here. Yes, Thank I am you. here. Just want to get the record. Yep. Okay. And with that, I'll ask if there's anybody who wants to make any comments in favor of this application. Can use the uh, raise your hand feature on Zoom. Do we have any guests online, Molly? I don't think I see any on the list here. I don't think so. Okay, I'll ask if there's anybody who wants to make a comment opposed to the project. Okay, any comments either for or against general comments? 
Okay. Mr. Chair, I did receive an email um, from an abutter. Okay, yeah, do you want to read that into the record? Yeah, I would like to very much, thank you. Okay. Um, the letter, uh, the email was received um, on April 20th from Robert LeMay, uh, LeMay Outdoor LLC. Um, and um, I, I told him I would read this into the record. Uh, morning, Beth. I'm not sure when the next meeting is. I was told by Molly it was tonight. Um, I have my second COVID shot today. Not sure how, that, how that's going to go. Anyway, I was just hoping to give you a quick rundown since no one um, wants to talk to me. I'm the owner of property R7, uh, 22A, and 22C, which will be the back of all the Blueberry Ridge project. I completely support the project. I have no problems at all with it. I have been running a shooting range here since 2012 when I opened LeMay Outdoors LLC. The same year, 2011, that we had our pond built was the same year we built our shooting bunkers with the dirt along with the one quarter mile road. Uh, the only two issues I have with this is one, I don't want the city to shut me down or create a noise ordinance because of this new construction. All my shooting will be more than 300 feet from any proposed dwelling. We don't do clay shooting or trap shooting, so no shots will be fired into the air. All our shooting is straight target and with either rifle, bow, or crossbow. Uh, two, I would recommend that the board require a four foot wire fence constructed around the entire northern stone boundary to prevent any kid or pets from crossing onto any of the three ranges. Uh, could you please forward this along to the board? Um, any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to ask. Thanks, uh, Robert LeMay. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, I did uh, take the opportunity to discuss um, uh, Mr. LeMay's concerns with um, the code enforcement director um, mm. and um, uh, to his understanding, the only two uh, provisions that would uh, affect Mr. LeMay are the 300 foot setback requirement, which is a state law requirement, not a local requirement. And um, just wanted to make clear that there is currently a noise ordinance already in place, not one that would need to be added for this project. Um, the standards are fairly generic um, um, and uh, while we could, couldn't could say whether or not uh, there would be a violation, um, uh, Jamie's not expecting that this will be an issue. Um, uh, clearly an individual homeowner has every right to make a complaint under the noise ordinance, but um, likely the noise generated unless it was really excessive would probably not uh, be a violation of the noise ordinance. Okay. Um, okay, before I close the public hearing, are there any other comments? Anybody else in the public that would like to speak? Okay, hearing none, I'm gonna close the public hearing. Mr. Chair? Yes. I do see Mr. Robert LeMay um, on the participants list. Ah, I'm sorry, on? I didn't notice him. Is but he he's online? muted. He's, he's muted. muted. I just wanted to see if he had something to say or if his letters suffice. Um, yeah, you can send if you can send us a, a chat, use the chat feature or use the raise I, your hand. I feature. am on here, yes. You are, okay. All right, did, did you want to make a comment on the application? No, no, I just uh, I just wanted to make sure it was read. And uh, like I said, I'm okay with the project. Uh, I'm perfectly fine with the project. I've just been doing this. It's not part of my business, but it it's encompassed with my business and I just wanted to make sure nothing changed as far as my property goes. I'm plenty of distance away from the stone wall. So I just wanted to make sure it was read into the public record. Okay. All right. Hey, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you. Dana, can you point out on this map where that shooting range is? I'm not sure exactly where the range is that the pond Mr. LeMay was talking about is in this area. Okay. Uh, let me go to different view here. So there's Mr. LeMay's pond. I'm not really sure uh, where these shooting ranges are in relationship to the, to this pond. Uh, like I don't see him in the aerial photograph. If if Mr. LeMay is still online and he can maybe help us with uh, where these ranges are. 
I am still online. If you, uh, the best way to explain it is, I, I can see your cursor. If you notice in the back of the lawn behind the house, there's a road that starts there. Right here? Yep, and it goes all the way back. Yep, keep going. It, 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 yep, all the way to there. There's, there's, yep, there's one right where you just were. There's one there, which shoots back towards the house, which is in a different direction. And there's also one back where the black line is. Oh, okay, back in here. Yep, and then the the regular one we use is actually right behind the house where we have a ten foot wall. Yep, right here where we have a ten foot wall where we use as a like I said, we use the dirt from the from the building of the pond to build the bunker and the road to go out back. Oh, okay. So just so everybody's clear. closest range is about 700 feet from the nearest house yes oh. it's quite it's quite a distance so i think the ranges aren't going to be aren't, aren't an issue at all with this property and there's plenty of trees in between that and oh, the yeah. houses to uh, block right. some of the, the sound yep okay um, any questions from the board? I have one, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, is the applicant, um, does, do, do they want to put a fence up as suggested by Mr. LeMay? Or is that a consideration by them? Um, well, <laughs> Mr. LeMay has uh, posted the stone wall with signs basically notifying everybody that there's a shooting range and it's also posted with no trespassing. So. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other comments from the board? As the applicant, I'd just like to say that I'd prefer to not have to put up a fence um, due to the added expense. Okay. Mr. Chair, this is Diane. I'm I'm okay with the signs as long as he signed it. Okay. And anybody else on the board have a comment? Okay, it doesn't sound like it. Um, are there any engineering issues from the city engineer that we need to talk about tonight? Uh, both Matt and Matthew are here this evening. If you want to ask them that question, yeah, yeah. Good evening. I um, I reviewed these plans. Um, I made in my comments a few. It's most. It was mostly uh, just some small plan revisions that uh, for clarification purposes mostly. And I think Dana's uh, done well in addressing those already. Actually, um, the biggest outstanding issue would be. Uh, as he's got pulled up here the 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 drainage uh, the, it's an infiltration area right there along the uh the entrance and i I've, I've simply asked that they uh just clarify the uh capacity of it a little more just to be sure that we're not uh putting too much stormwater runoff into it and making sure it doesn't uh overtake the roadway or go onto the abutters or anything like that so i've just asked them to provide a little more detail as far as what the, what the drainage is doing capacity wise and, and and due to the shortness of the time between site plan and tonight uh jason did look at uh this in in, in some respect but he, he's going to reach out to you matt and have a phone conversation and so that you guys can move this thing forward perfect okay um, just one question about kind of on the previous subject, which way is the range facing? Are, are, are the, are the guns facing like towards the houses or are they away or? Um, as far as from the, none of them are facing towards the houses at all. Okay. They're all heading in uh, more of a, like a east-west direction. 
So they're, they're looking back towards Springvale Village? Um, the one that your cursor is next to is heading towards Springvale Village, and the other one is heading towards a little bit more towards my house. Okay. What, what about the one near the house? The one near the house goes uh, perpendicular with the stone wall, so it actually starts okay. from the left of the yard and shoots towards, like, behind the behind the back of the pond. Okay, so it's going this way, shooting this way? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay, sounds good. Um, so it sounds like we've addressed Mr. LeMay's concerns. That's what I'm hearing. <coughs> Um, if there's no other comments, um, no other comments from any of the planning board members, I guess we can, we can move on with this. Okay. Not hearing anybody. I'm uh, here with it. You go with it. Okay. Um, do we have a finding of fact for this? Yes, we do. Okay. Uh, give me a moment. I'm trying to. We're trying a new system to see if we can get through this a little bit easier. Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> I know. Always a few wrinkles, right? Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through the combinations, um, and there are a number of them. Uh, the first category is the ones that are not applicable. Uh, that includes 275-10-32, uh, sufficient water. 275-10-33, impact on existing water supply. 275-10-36, sewage disposal. 2-75-10-38, um, which are aesthetics and wildlife. 275-10-41, which is impact on water quality and shoreline. 275-10-42, impact on groundwater quantity or quality. 275-10-43, floodplain. 275-10-46, recreation and open space areas. 275, whoops, spoke too soon. 275 hold on, I gotta get back up on my screen. 10-47, um, which is phosphorus impact on great ponds. 275-10-48, which is spaghetti lots. 280-16-7.8, which is water supply. 280-16-7.9, which is sewage disposal. 280-16-7.12, which is groundwater. 280-16-7.13, which is exterior lighting. 280-16-7.15, which is landscaping. 280-16-7.16, which is shoreland. 280-16-7.18, which is buffering, and 280-16-7.19, which is airport encroachment. Motion to accept. Second, All Diane. Are you ready for you a know. vote? We're ready for a vote. Lenny? Yes. Jack? Yes. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. Tom? Yes. That's a 5 -0. that's unanimous. The next thing we're gonna do is look at um, some combinations, other combinations. Um, and I'm trying to get myself positioned here. So the first one is 275-10-34, uh, which is soil erosion. Um, and the recommendation is that the standard is met, and the explanation is that adequate provisions will be made for erosion control, and the forested wetlands on the site will be preserved. And then the second one is 280-16-7.7, um, hold on, I'm still scrolling. Um, and again, that's, a, um, a, that's erosion control. Um, and the recommendation is that the standard is met, um, and the explanation is that adequate provisions will be made for erosion control and the forested wetlands on the site will be preserved. Motion to accept. Second, Oliver. Okay. And a vote. Lenny? Yes. Jack? 
Yes. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. And Tom? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Um, the next one uh, are the traffic related ones and they start with 275-10-35. Um, um, uh, which is that uh, recommendation is that the standard is met with condition and the explanation is that with the condition that an MDOT driveway entry permit is secured, the standard is met. Um, the second one is 280-16-7.3, um, access into the site. Uh, access into the site. Uh, again, the recommendation is that the standard is met with condition and the same explanation. Motion to accept. Second, Diane. Okay, and a vote. Lenny? Yes. Jack? Yes. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. And Tom? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Um, the next one is 275 10 37, solid waste. Um, the recommendation is that the standard is met. The explanation is that private waste hauling services shall be utilized for residential lots. Um, and then the second one is 280-16-7.14, um, which is also um, solid waste. Wait a second. Um, and again, the, it's the same recommendation that the standard is met um, with the um, same explanation that private waste hauling services are going to be utilized. Motion to accept. Second, Oliver. And a vote. Lenny? Yes. Uh, Jack? Yes. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. And Tom? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Uh, the next one is 275-10-45, uh, uh, which is stormwater management. Uh, the recommendation is that the standard is met with condition. The explanation is that with the condition that the applicant demonstrates the capacity of infiltration and peak flow rates to the satisfaction of the city engineer, the standard is met. Um, the second one is 280-16-7.6, also stormwater management. Uh, recommendation is uh, the standard is met with condition. Hold on a second, I just found a mistake. Um, and for the same explanation. Motion to accept. Second it, Diane. And yeah, a roll call vote. Lenny? Yes. Jack? Yes. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. And Tom? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Um, the next one is 275-10-40. I think I just, we just voted on that. Sorry, 275-10-40, uh, hold on a second. I just want to make sure it's the right number. Yes, 40, uh, financial and technical capacity. The recommendation is that the standard is met. The explanation is that the applicant has demonstrated adequate technical and financial capacity. Uh, the second one is 280-16, um, I have trouble scrolling, 280-16-7.17, uh, which is also financial and technical capacity. Um, and it's the same recommendation standard is met. Uh, the applicant has demonstrated um, adequate financial and technical capacity. Motion to accept. Second, Oliver. All right, yeah, vote. Lenny? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Oliver? Yes. Uh, uh, Diane? Yes. And Tom. Yes. Motion passes 5-0. The next one is 275-10-44, uh, um, which is identification of freshwater wetlands. The recommendation is that the standard has been met. Uh, the explanation is that the project will be designed in such a way that wetlands on site will not be disturbed. Um, and then the second one is 280-16-7. 
uh, dash 11 natural features, same recommendation that the standard is met and same explanation. Motion to accept. Second it, Diane. And a vote. Lenny? Yes. Jack? Yes. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. And Tom? Yes. Okay, motion passes 5-0. Next, now we're into the singles. Uh, so the first one is 275-10-31, pollution. The recommendation is that the standard is met. Um, uh, the explanation is uh, that construction of the private way will not generate pollution. Motion to accept. Second, Oliver. And a vote. Lenny? Yes. Um, yes. Jack? Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. Uh, and Tom? Yes. Uh, motion passes 5-0. The next one is, uh, uh, where did it go? My screen. 275-10-39, um, which is uh, conformance with other regulations. The recommendation is that the standard is met. Um, the explanation is that with the, uh, actually it should be met with condition, sorry. Um, and the explanation is that with the condition that minimum front setbacks are shown on plans, the standard is met. Motion to accept. Second, Oliver. And a vote. Lenny? Yes. Jack? Yes. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. And Tom? Yes. Okay, the next one is 275-10-39. Uh, actually, we just voted on that, sorry about that. Uh, the next one is 280-16-7.1, uh, which is utilization of the site. Um, and the recommendation is that the standard is met with condition. The explanation is that with the condition that the applicant show any deeded easements on the plan, the standard is met. Uh, could I stop at this point and ask Dana a direct question, please? Yeah. Dana, with the removal of that uh, uh, that easement, are there any other easements on the property? None. Okay, I'm going to make a suggestion that um, we actually uh, change this to say that it is met, not met with condition, um, and to say that I'm going to change the narrative here. Give me just a second. The subdivision and site plan have been designed to avoid sensitive natural features. You're up, Tom. Motion to accept. Diane. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Lenny? Yes. <laughs> um, <Jack>. Yes. <laughs> Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. And Tom? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Next one is 280-16-7.2, access to the site. The recommendation is that the standard is met with condition. And the explanation is that with the condition that road construction shall not take place between October 15, 2021 and April 1st, 2022, the standard is met. Motion to accept. Second, Oliver. And a vote. Lenny? Yes. Jack? Yes. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. And Tom? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Um, the next one is 280-16-7.5, pedestrian circulation. Recommendation is that the standard is met. The explanation is that only pedestrians associated with the proposed single family homes, hold on, I've got a typo, are anticipated on site and are provided with adequate parking and safe passage. Motion to accept. Second it, Diane. 
Anna Vo. Um, Lenny? Yes. Jack? Yes. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. Tom? Yes. Great. Next one is 280-16-710, 7.10 utilities. Recommendation is that the standard is met with conditions. The explanation is that with the condition that utility markers be placed and maintained until the site is fully stabilized, this standard is met. Motion to accept. Second, Oliver. And a vote. Um, Lenny? Yes. Jack? Yes. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. Tom? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Uh, next one is 280-16-7.11. The recommendation is that the standard is met with conditions. Um, the explanation is, oh, I'm sorry, let's, let's say that the, excuse me, the recommendation is that the standard is met. Um, the explanation is this project will be designed in such a way that the wetlands on site will not be disturbed. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Uh, we did that one already. Oops. Yeah, I didn't do it as a combo, though. I missed that one. I have it marked off that you did. Yeah, I think you did okay, it as a combo. Me. Okay. You did it as a so combo. Can you, Diane, can you just tell me who made the motion? If you have them. If you don't, don't worry about it. I'll find it. Oh, I'm just checking them off to make sure you didn't miss anything. We know it's Tom. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Either myself or Oliver. <laughs> just trying to move this okay, along. So I'm just going to say same as point one. Don't worry about it. We'll catch that. So the next one is, uh, and I think we're pretty well, I think we're done. Yeah. Negative. Uh -oh. uh, you no, know. but 7.4. Uh, let's see, page number three, 280-16-7-2. You got that one. Oh, hold on. No, correction. Point uh, four. 280-16-7-4. Uh, I thought that was in a combo. Uh, but let's, it, let's do it anyway, just to be on the safe side. Um, okay. So internal, that's uh, 280-16-7.4, internal vehicular circulation. The recommendation is that the standard is met with conditions. You're right, it should have been a single. Um, and the explanation is that with the condition that the road and hammerhead turnaround be maintained to accommodate emergency apparatus, the standard is met. Motion to accept. Second, Second is Diane. Your call, Lenny. <laughs> I heard Oliver first. Okay. Lenny? Yes. Jack? Yes. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. And Tom? Yes. Motion passes um, 5 0. Oh. Okay. Do we have a suggested motion for this? Yes, we uh, do. Uh, don't we have uh, uh, 720.1, 0.2, and 0.3? Yeah, you got private. Uh, no, those are substandards. You, you, those, those don't need to be. They, they shouldn't have been in there. Okay. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. You're absolutely right. Because <clears throat> those are private way standards. Um, Okay, so 280-16-7.20.1, uh, um, no more than one dwelling unit and related accessory buildings and uses. The recommendation is that the standard is met with condition. Um, and the explanation is that with the condition that all buildings have sprinkler systems installed, the standard is met. Motion to accept. Second it, Diane. Yes. Lenny? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Oh, I love it. You're all anticipating me. Oliver. Yes. And Diane? Yes. And Tom? Yes. Motion passes 5 up. Uh, the next one is 280-16-7.20.2, the maintenance agreement. Uh, the recommendation is the standard is met. Uh, the explanation is the road maintenance agreement shall be put in place. Motion to accept. Second, Oliver. Lenny? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. And Tom? Yes. 
motion passes 5-0. Um, the last one, I believe, is 280-16-7.20.3 minimum standards. The recommendation is that the standard is met with condition. Um, and the explanation is that with the condition that an MDOT driveway entrance permit is secured, the standard is met. Motion to accept. Second, Oliver. Lenny? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. And Tom? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Okay, so we get all the finding of fact now. Yes. Yes. Sorry yeah. about that, guys. Huh? <laughs> um, until I until I miss those, it I my sense was that it did go faster. So we'll we'll try to do that and improve that process as we go along. Yep. So the draft motion is as follows: um, the planning board accepts the information in the January 15, 2021, and April 16, 2021 summary reports, and the April 20. 2021 Site Plan Review Committee recommendation grants the requested waivers and finds that the proposed minor subdivision, minor site plan, and private way file number R7 24D to create a three lot subdivision with associated private way on property owned by Joe's Home Improvement and located at 369 Oak Street, tax map lot R7 24D has satisfied the requirements of Article 16 of the Zoning Ordinance and Article. Um, Six of the subdivision ordinance subject to the submission of information and conditions described below. <clears throat> One, by May 12, 2021, unless other arrangements are made with the planning director, provide five copies of revised plans to the planning department that adequately respond to issues raised in the review, which are part of the following conditions of approval. <coughs> Excuse me. A, the applicant make revisions based on the Assistant City Engineer's memo, notes 2 through 7A and 7B, to the satisfaction of the Assistant City Engineer. B, the applicant demonstrate the capacity of the infiltration area at the entrance of the private way with consideration to the poorly draining soil type and the high water table to the satisfaction of the Assistant City Engineer. C, the applicant compares pre and post development peak flow rates at common comparison points to the satisfaction of the Assistant City Engineer. D, the applicant show minimum front setback on plans. E, the applicant show, uh, I think we can get rid of this one. Hold on. Two, road construction shall not take place between October 15 and April 1st. Three, all utility markers shall be placed prior to start of construction and be maintained until the site is fully stabilized to the satisfaction of the city engineer. Four, all buildings have a sprinkler system installed uh, as per note 17 on the plans. Five, the hammerhead turnaround be kept clean and no parking be allowed at any time. Six, the road be maintained year round to accommodate emergency apparatus. Seven, provide an itemized estimate of materials and labor to the city engineer to establish the amount of the required performance guarantee. The applicant shall then provide the planning department with one signed original and two additional hard copies of a performance guarantee in the amount established by the city engineer. Eight, to provide an AutoCAD submission tied to the main state coordinate system, which is acceptable to the city engineer. Nine, to provide two hard copies of the planning board signed subdivision plat with book and page number where it is recorded at the York County Registry of Deeds and 10 to submit a copy of the approved main department of transportation driveway entrance permit to the planning department once secured along with a copy of the approved plan if it differs from the one approved by the planning board a written description of any changes and be prepared to seek an amendment to the planning board approval should the mdot require modification of the plan 11 to establish an inspection escrow account with the public works department in an amount acceptable to the city engineer 12, to set up a pre-construction conference with the code enforcement director and the assistant city engineer. 13 is if installation of approved landscaping, and in, in this case, what we're referring to here is stabilizing the site. Is not completed by September 15, 2021, the end of the growing season. The applicant shall be required to provide a performance guarantee in an amount to cover the cost of the landscape material and its installation. The guarantee shall be required to stay in force for one full growing season after installation. And 14, this approval is dependent on and limited to the documents and plans contained in the application submitted and affirmed to by the applicant. 
No project plan or development previously approved by the planning board may be altered or modified without securing prior approval of the planning board in the form of an amendment. However, provided, however, that if at any time it becomes necessary or desirable to make modifications to the development, the planning director may approve minor modifications. Any changes to the approved plan shall be provided to the planning department prior to construction to evaluate whether an amendment of the approval is required. The applicant shall be aware that non-compliance with this condition may require modification of construction elements that are not consistent with the approval, may delay release of all or portions of a performance guarantee, and may result in delay in receipt of an occupancy permit or a stock work order. Motion to accept. Second. Second it. I'm sorry, who did the second? Uh, I heard Oliver first. Okay. And a vote. Okay, Lenny? Yes. Jack? Yes. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. And Tom? Yes. Motion passes by vote. Yeah. Good luck. All right, thank you very much. Have a good night. Thanks, Dana. Have, Have a good night. night. Oh. Okay, let's see what I can come up with. Okay, take it away, Mr. Chair. Yeah, you ready for the next one? Yeah. Okay. Next item on our agenda is da file dash R5 dash 42. This is loud environmental reserve trail improvement. This is an amended site plan. And Shoreland, this is care of Kevin McKeon. Um, do you want to give us any background on this stuff? Sure, I'll give you a very brief background. So the applicant here uh, that Kevin is representing is the Sanford Springville Mausoleum Way Land Trust. Um, the uh, uh, the loud environmental reserve is in existence now. Um, uh, a creation of a small parking area was approved as a staff level amendment. Um, excuse me, as a staff level site plan. Um, uh, Kevin is back now and he's asking um, to be allowed to put in two foot bridges and a boardwalk on the existing trail. Um, and the, uh, I'm sure Kevin will talk about this very articulately, but um, uh, the purpose of putting in these improvements is actually to um, uh, protect the environment. Um, the trail can get quite muddy. It crosses a couple of, uh, un it crosses an unnamed stream and a swale. Um, and that is why it's in front of you because it does um, require a shoreland permit to uh, make these installations. Um, and Kevin is here. Uh, Kevin, if, if uh, you're going to be given screen sharing opportunity, um, and if you could make a, a brief presentation and please introduce anybody um, from uh, who might be with you this evening. Sure. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Kevin McKeon from the Mouse Marine Land Trust. Um, and I'm here solo. Uh, and what we have is, like Beth said, a couple of footbridges and a boardwalk and also a length of uh, trail improvement on either side of the stream. And um, I, if you've had a chance to look at your packet, just about all the information is there, so we could probably keep it short and sweet. If anybody has any questions, I'd be glad to entertain any questions. Okay. Um, any questions? I guess everybody on the, on the board did have a chance to review the packet. Um, are there any questions? I do have one, Mr. Chair, if I may. Yeah. Um, I was having problems this week with a, a COVID shot. Um, and then when I was opening up the packages and that, um, I was having a hard time viewing the image. Can someone throw up an image of a curb cut oil, oil, oilage image, please, for me? What is that? It's called curb cut foliage image. Well, that was related to the parking permit, I believe, the building permit for the parking area and the parking rail. I'm not sure if that's pertinent here, but I could probably take some time to find one if you. Can you I, just uh, can can someone just tell me the the um, measurement from that to the road, please and thank you. I'm not sure what you're asking, uh, Diane. Measurement from what to the road? 
from where the it says the curb cut image is to the road. Like it says there's foliage there from what I'm reading, but I cannot open up the picture. Yeah. Or I can't seem to find one. That was part of the package that had to do with the um, parking rail installation and the small parking lot with the uh, sign uh, showing that that is indeed the Loud Environmental Reserve, which is already installed. Uh, and the foliage picture would have been a couple of uh, uh, pictures of two trees uh, bordering the um, entryway to the parking area. So, Diane, what I think you're addressing here is we, we put those landscaped anchors there to give that curb cut more of a defined area since it was already in place. Um, that was part of the first part of the, uh, the whole project, which was related solely to the trailhead parking lot. Um, okay. That should be in the packet. I could pull it up now, but I'm, I'm kind of just operating from one machine right now with technical difficulties. So okay, I can send that to you later if you want. No, that's fine. I'll I'll still keep trying to get it open. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Other questions from the committee? Uh, I yeah, found can, there's a setback of 12 to 15 feet, and they're less than 25 feet apart, if that helps, Diane. Yes, it does. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. Tom, um, what did you say, 12 to 15 feet, and what was the other? And it was they were less than 25 feet apart. Thank you. There's yeah, there's no scale or anything. It's really just a, it's a picture, yeah. it's a yeah photograph. So, great, thank you, Tom. Yeah, Kevin, this is Jack. Uh, my wife and I walked the trail yesterday, and the sign does say no motorized vehicles, which I appreciate. But are both of those trails existing right now? It's the trail we came down didn't seem to veer off to the left at all. Okay, if you follow my cursor, Jack, this trail is existing where my cursor is going here. This trail also is existing, but it's unmarked and unflagged as of yet. That's one of our projects for later on this summer. And there's okay. um, also going to be another smaller loop trail right up in here, very small one. Okay, and at the uh, extent of the property, we saw a couple trees with uh, two blue stripes on them. Is that the, the end of your property? Couldn't tell you. Okay, we saw a there's, lot of there's a, yeah, there's, ribbon, yeah, there's a lot. Of a lot there's a lot of there's a there's a fairly well defined. Uh, boundary markers along the trees here, um, whether they're blue or double blue or or not, I don't know. Over the course of uh, time, there's been some logging there, so I suspect maybe some loggers might have gone in to define it with some flagging. Um, well, we saw flagging. We also saw some uh, oh oh pieces that were in there that said uh, there were property corners or something, but I don't, I'm not sure if it was this property or someone else's, but there is, there are, there are, there are several um, uh, iron pipes or um, iron bars with surveyors caps on them in various places. No, these were oak sticks with flagging tape on it. But it's no big deal. Oh. I mean, it looked looked fine. Okay. Okay. Other comments from board members? I do have one for you, Kevin. Um, I oh. noticed the uh, the material that you're going to build the footbridges out of is pressure treated lumber. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Um, I know. I know pressure treated lumber is not not the most environmentally friendly thing. I know it does have arsenic in it. Is there any concern with putting that into the water? This stuff is. Uh, it's a good question. The, this pressure treated lumber that we're getting from uh, Lowe's is the environmentally safe type of pressure treated lumber and not the bad stuff. Okay. All right. That was the one question that stuck out for me. 
Me too. <laughs> but I wanted to find out. <laughs> yeah, that's good to hear. Um, okay. And any other concerns, questions? No. Nope. Sounds pretty quiet out there. All right. So I guess we're ready to move on with this one, Beth. Okay. You want to go to the findings? Sure. All right. We're going to try this new system again. Uh -oh. Hopefully. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All righty. Okay. So the, the first combinations that we're going to do are the not applicables. Um, and uh, Diane, you're going to keep track of me, right? Yep. Okay. So the first one is 270-15.D, um, uh, parentheses small d, which is about wastewater. The next one is 270-15.D, uh, parentheses small f, and that's historic. The next one is 270-15.D with a small g in parentheses, that's commercial fishing. 280-16-7.8, which is water supply. 280-16-7.9, which is sanitary waste disposal. 280-16-7.10, which is utilities. And 280-16-7.12, which is groundwater. 280-16-7.13, which is exterior lighting. And 280-16-7.11, which is the airport. Motion to accept. Second, Oliver. And a vote. Lenny? Yes. Jack? Yes. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. And Tom? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Uh, the next set of combinations start with, and this is going to be a little bit dicier than I was hoping, but um, give me a second here while I get caught up. Two set. Uh, 270-15.D, parentheses A, which is healthful conditions. Um, and the recommendation is that the standard is met with conditions. And the explanation is that with installation of erosion control methods in the shoreland zone prior to construction and maintenance of controls until the site is stabilized, um, shall maintain and preserve the environmentally sensitive areas, groundwater, vegetation, and natural habitat to the maximum extent. Um, same explanation and recommendation for um, the uh, 280, excuse me, 270-15.D parentheses B pollution. Um, same recommendation for 270-15DC. Um, um, sorry, I'm sorry, that's not right. Um, the second D, not C. Hold on while I cross that out because. 280-15.DC is a not applicable. Did I, I'm hoping I caught that in the last one. Yes, you did. Good. Okay. So that one's going to go away. Um, and so D is uh, wildlife. And again, it's the same explanation. 270-15.DE, um, um, which is uh, conserving shore cover and uh, visual and actual access to water. Uh, same explanation and recommendation. Um, 270-15.D, parentheses, small h, um, which is related to the floodplain. Again, same recommendation and explanation. Um, 270-15.D, parentheses, i, which is land use. Same recommendation. No, well, I guess that's not right. But uh, uh, same recommendation, met with condition. Explanation is a little different with replacement of trees removed in violation of shorelands. Excuse me. This should have been, um, this should have the same explanation as the one above it. Give me just a moment while I actually correct the finding. So I, I, those, uh, those are, no, nope, there's a couple more here. So give me just one moment while I get that one in there. Um, and that was I, so the next one is 280-16-7.1, the use of the site. Um, and that is the same explanation and the same recommendation. Um, 280-16-7.6, which is stormwater. 
same recommendation and explanation. 280-16-7.7, which is erosion control, same recommendation and explanation. And 280-16-7.11, natural features. Um, and that is the same explanation and recommendation. Um, and then uh, 280-16-7.15, which is landscaping, um, same uh, uh, explanation and recommendation. Um, and then 280-16-7.16, shoreland, um, same explanation and recommendation. And 280-16-7.18, buffering, um, and the has a slight addition in that it says, in addition to the rest of the same explanation, um, the rest of it says that there's no buffering of neighboring properties that is required. Motion to accept. Mr. Chair. Mm, let's do the second first. Oliver did it. Oliver did. did it? Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Diane. Um, 280-16-7.6. Stormwater management has a different uh, explanation than the rest of them. Let's take a look at that one. Double checking. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm doing the same. Um, Talks about downstream properties, adjacent properties, damaged streets. Uh, I don't know that you've got the right document. Mine says with installation of erosion control methods in the shoreland zone prior to construction and maintenance of controls until the site is stabilized, shall provide adequate provisions for disposal of stormwater without damage to streets, adjacent properties, or downstream properties. You're right, Diane. Why don't we take a separate vote on that one? Okay. Do we want to take a vote on the first one first? Uh, okay. Well, let me pull 7.6 out of that one then. Okay. Hold on. Let me move that to a different part. Sorry, Mr. Chair. That's right. No, no, this is... This is good, Diane. It's better do it now than have to do a reconsideration next week. That's good. You're keeping us honest. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we had a motion uh, from Tom and a second from Oliver. And so we need to do the vote. Um, that was for the grouping. And we'll do the, the individual one separately. Lenny? Yes. Jack? Yes. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. Tom? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Now let's do the motion on 280-16-7.6, stormwater. Motion to accept. Second it, Diane. Lenny? Yes. Jack? Yes. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. And, uh... Tom. Yes. Sorry, my computer has decided to freeze on me. Give me a moment while I see if I can make it work. Okay, good. The next one is 280-16-7.2, um, access to the site, 280-16-7.3, access into the site, 280-16-7.4, internal circulation, and 280-17-7.5, pedestrian circulation. Um, and give me a moment and I'll read you that. Um, <clears throat> and the explanations are all slightly different, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to go through them if, it, if it's okay with you. Um, so for 280-16-7.2 access to the site, the explanation is that Oak Street has adequate capacity to serve the site, and the recommendation is that the standard is met. For the access into the site, which is 7.3, again, the recommendation is that the standard is met, and the explanation is that access to the site is existing and adequate to serve the proposed use. Um, 280-16.7.4, internal circulation, again, the recommendation is that the standard is met. Um, the explanation is that internal circulation is existing and adequate to serve the proposed use. 280-16-7.5, pedestrian circulation, the recommendation is that the standard is met, and the explanation is that uh, the project shall provide for safe movements of pedestrians on site. Motion to accept. Second, all over. Lenny? Yes. Yeah? 
Yes. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. Um, and Tom? Yes. Okay, motion passes 5-0. And then um, we have a few singles. 280-16-7.14, uh, solid waste. Um, and the recommendation is that the standard is met. The explanation is that the facility shall continue to operate with carry in, carry out rules and shall not create a, a burden on municipal services. Motion to accept. Second it, Diane. Lenny? Yes. Zach? Yes. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. And Tom. Yes. Um, thank you, Tom. Motion passes. Um, by vote. Um, the last one, 280-16-7.17, uh, financial and technical capacity. The recommendation is that the standard is met, and the explanation is that the applicant has demonstrated financial and technical capacity. Motion to accept. Second, Oliver. Uh, Lenny? Yes. Jack? Yes. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. And Tom? Yes. Motion passes by. Did I get them all this time? Did she, did she miss any, Diane? Double check 28015DI. You said something, then you said no. Yep. Let's do that one individually, just to be on the safe side. Um, the standard is that it's in conformance with the provisions of 270-13 land use standards. The recommendation is that the standard is met with conditions. The explanation is that with installation of erosion control methods in the shore land zone prior to construction and maintenance of controls until the site is stabilized, shall maintain and preserve environmentally sensitive areas, uh, groundwater, vegetation, and natural habitats to the maximum extent. Motion to accept. Second it, Diane. Yes. Lenny? Jack? Yes. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. And Tom? Yes. Great. Motion passes 5-0. Any others, Diane? Nope, you're good. Good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, have you got a suggestion motion for us? Yes. All righty. Let's see if I can get my hands on it. Okay. The planning board accepts the... Let me just make sure I'm on the right one. <laughs> Alrighty, I've got it. The planning board accepts the information in the April 21st, 2021 summary report. Let me revise that. Uh, give me a second, I have to check the date, April 20th. Um, pretty sure that it was the April, here we go, yeah, sorry. Um, in the April 16, 2021 summary report, um, the, uh, and, and the site plan review committee's April 20, 2021 recommendation grants the requested waiver, and that is singular, um, and finds that the proposed amended minor site plan and shoreland zoning application file number five, R5-42, to construct two foot bridges and a boardwalk uh, to an existing non-motorized trail in the vicinity of 105 and 112 Oak Street, tax map and lot numbers R5-42, R5-43A, and R5-44A has satisfied the requirements of Article 16 of the Zoning Ordinance. 
and chapter 270, subject to the submission of information and conditions described below. One, erosion control methods shall be implemented before starting construction and until the site is stabilized to the satisfaction of the Director of Code Enforcement. Two, the trail shall not be used by non-motorized vehicle, by, excuse me, by motorized vehicles. If that changes in the future, the applicant shall seek approval for amended permits. Three, establish an escrow, no, yeah, establish an inspection escrow account with the Public Works Department in an amount acceptable to the city engineer. Four, to set up a pre-construction conference with the code enforcement director and the city engineer. Five, if installation of approved landscaping is not completed by September 15, 2021, the end of the growing season, the applicant shall be required to provide a performance guarantee in an amount to cover the cost of the landscape material and its installation. The guarantee shall be required to stay in force for one full growing season after installation. And six, this approval is dependent on and limited to the documents and plans contained in the application submitted and, and affirmed to by the applicant. No project plan or development previously approved by the planning board may be altered or modified without securing prior approval of the planning board in the form of an amendment. Provided, however, that if at any time it becomes necessary or desirable to make modifications to the development, the planning director may approve minor modifications. Any changes to the approved plan shall be provided to the planning department prior to construction to evaluate whether an amendment of the approval is required. The applicant shall be aware that noncompliance with this condition may require modification of construction elements that are not consistent with the approval, may delay release of all or portions of a performance guarantee, and may result in a stop work order. Motion to accept. Second, Oliver. And a roll call vote. Lenny? Yes. Jack? Yes. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes. Tom? Yes. Uh, motion passes 5-0. Okay, Kevin, looks like you're all set. Hey, thank you very much, everybody. Hey, thanks. Have a good evening. You too. Bye. -bye. All right. Are you ready for the next one, Beth? Yep. This one should be a quickie. Yep. This is the. And very uh, satisfying. Very, very satisfying. <laughs> yes, I think for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little discussion on the uh, standard conditions of approval, hopefully an effort to consolidate these. Right. So you, you, you remember that going through these last couple of applications, how um, repetitive they were toward the end. Um, and I know the board knows what I'm talking about, but this is mostly for the, um, uh, the audience that might be watching that they understand this. Uh, the board, a number of years ago, adopted um, uh, a series of standard, what they called standard conditions of approval, um, so that they knew that they were making the same conditions from uh, case to case, so the board knew that. And so um, to make sure that the language was consistent, they finally got uh, crafted as and put under this moniker of a standard condition. Um, it's very repetitive um, to read them over and over again. I'm sure you're bored. I know the applicants are probably bored. Um, and so the suggestion has been made, I, I'm making it, um, planning department's making it, that um, if you formally adopt these as standard conditions of approval, that will help us shorten up the motions. Um, uh, the applicants would be, and the planning board would be provided with a copy um, in the summary memo, so they would be aware of what the standard conditions are ahead of time. Um, they will be doctored a little bit because not everybody, not every application needs a DOT permit or a DEP permit, so there'll be some slight adjustments. But with the adoption, that what can happen is when the motion is made, that uh, once you move to the categories of those standard conditions. Um, what you can do is say, and with standard condition two, three, five, and seven, uh, noting that it's a DOT permit, something like that. Um, and we'll work out uh, the language out uh, to assist you, and we'll, I'm sure we'll refine it over a couple of uses until we finally, you know, it slips off our tongue pretty easily. Um, uh, so that's the whole point of this. It, it, it's an attempt to try to uh, sort of eliminate some of the repetitiveness um, and still maintain consistency from application to application. 
Oh, I did want to point out that I did add one additional one from what you saw at the work session at the last meeting. And that was, I believe, let me see if I can get my hands on it quickly. It's, it's a new item uh, four, um, and it says, uh, and I am going to propose a change to it. Um, I found this uh, in the ordinance, uh, provide three hard copies of the planning board signed subdivision plat. And I would say, with, uh, and I would say subdivision plat is really, there's two options there. So there would be subdivision and then the other option would be private way. With book and page number where it's recorded at the, at the York County Registry of Deeds. Um, this is not something we've been doing. We've been requiring two copies. Um, uh, the ordinance specifies three with one going to one for the planning department, one to go to code enforcement, and the third one to go to the assessor's office. Um, we have an internal system that's not laid out in the uh, uh, in the ordinance that says that once we have final plans, they actually get signed by either Molly or myself, uh, and then. We have five copies of those and we distribute them to those same three people that were referenced in the ordinance, uh, plus the applicant uh, and the engineering department. And, um, and so I went to um, the assessing department and I asked them if they felt they needed a copy of the signed plat with book and page number or if the, what we've been doing for at least the last five years, five and a half years, is just giving them the signed approved plan. And he told me that he felt he, that uh, I was told that they felt quite comfortable with just getting a copy of the signed approved plan. They did not need that plat. And so this is an, in a, I would recommend we reduce this to two um, and um, that uh, uh, that's in an attempt to be a bit more business friendly. Yeah, sounds good. But other than that, it's the same language that you saw at the work session. So when this, so when we get to the uh, the end of an application, just again to summarize, we're just going to say standard conditions of approval. You'll be more specific than that okay, because not specific. all projects have all of them. So it'll actually call out each of those standards, you know, by number. Right. And if there are any modifications, so for example, in uh, number five, you can see there's a main department of environmental protection as an example, uh, DOT, the FAA. So we would get clear about what we would, we would specify what that the agencies are um, that are generating those permits. Similarly, the one we just talked about that I added, um, uh, we would clarify whether we're talking about a subdivision plat or a private way. So there may be, a, and in occasionally, we don't have a need for a performance guarantee, and so that would not be called out in the numbers. So like I said, it's going to be a little clunky for the first couple of motions that we do this, but I, I expect that we'll refine the language, and ultimately it will still be a, a faster process. Um, certainly one of the things that we could do um, <clears throat> is we could post while we're doing the motion, um, we could post uh, the standard condition of approval with a markup, um, which would be what we would include probably in the summary report. Uh, DEP, if you read the DEP permits ever, you'll see that they have a set of standard conditions and they just attach them to the motion or to the uh, approval. And then they, they can cross out things that don't apply. They fill in the blanks for things that do. And I think we could do something similar to that. Okay. And if we approve this tonight, we can start doing this at the next meeting. Is that right? Hallelujah. Yeah. I almost thought we should have put it first on the agenda so we could <laughs> yeah. have gotten it out of the way for this evening's meeting. Yeah. But that would have um, been good. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll give a motion to accept them with the changes that you mentioned, Beth. Sounds good. I'll second. Two hard copies. That's good. I'll second that. These, okay. these are standard, um, so they should, I, I would bite my tongue to say, but maybe there should be citation. I'm going to make you do it if we do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down to 
Okay, I'm I'm willing so to. I'm okay. <laughs> Okay. If there's that, it's very easy to locate. Yes, they they, they are easy. Um, uh, would the board like to have citations on there? I don't care if you want. No, nope, this is yours. You got to decide whether you want them or not. Well, does the board feel well, having necessary? the citate, having the citations would allow us to if anybody ever had a question an applicant ever had a question as to where did this where does this requirement come from we can yep. point to it yep so do we can we accept these without the citations for now and then just add them or do we have to wait and add them and then come back and vote again no you can just direct us to add them all right Sounds good. And Tom, you can take care of that by amending your motion and, and Lenny accepting your um, your amendment. All right, I'll amend my emo I'll amend my motion to accept it with the citations being added later. Okay, and I'll accept that. Okay. Any more discussion? Don't sound like it. Okay. Uh, Ready for a vote? Lenny. Yes. Jack. Yes. Oliver. You lose Oliver? He's muted. I will mute. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tom. Yes. Got Diane. Yes. yes. Five of. <laughs> All right, so we're done with that one, right? Yep. Okay, and the next two items on our agenda, Dana Ventures and Coastal Oaks, those are going to stay on the table because they are not ready to go yet. Right, and I will give you an update on those under the planning director's report. Okay, and yeah, I think that's next. Um, so... Couple of things. The first is that um, our AA did not start last week. Um, uh, he'll be coming on board starting the first Monday in, in May. Um, so please bear with us a little bit longer. Um, uh, the second thing is I, um, I, I reached out. Remember when we started talking about the tabled items a few uh, meetings back? And uh, should there be some sort of, should they be put on notice to, you know, be give us some sense of when they're going to provide their final or their revised submissions. Um, and since then, two of those items have been dealt with. Uh, the first one was red line properties, which you approved at the last meeting. And the second one was the middle school bike path, which the site plan review committee approved yesterday morning. That leaves three items left on the table two of them for you and one more for the site plan we i think actually three of them are going to be for you um unfortunately midtown mall should be on this agenda and it's not and we will make sure we add that to the next meeting um so midtown mall um uh, uh, I, i've talked with ian and um uh the revised uh materials uh, some revised plans were supposed to be provided to him uh last week and he was anticipating making an app uh, making that submission this week we have not yet seen it um but um he was hoping to be on the first meeting in may and i i took at that point we hadn't even received the materials and as i said we still have not and so i suggested that if he could get them to us this week that um the second meeting in may would be uh probably more realistic because there does need to be additional review by staff done on that the second one is 18 witham street um that small subdivision um kind of uh, an, uh, next to the gentle dental uh site um and what was holding them up is a, a difficulty uh, uh lining up a surveyor um, they have now done that. Um, Ethan Scott has uh, told me that um, they received those materials, um, I think it was late last week, um, and that he was anticipating um, finalizing the remaining revised materials and making submissions shortly. Again, my expectation is we won't see that until the second meeting in May because it does have to go back out for review. There was quite a bit of stuff that needed to be cleared up. And then the third one is the Dana Ventures um, gravel pit. 
Um, and um, I was contacted, um, uh, I reached out to Tom Harmon, the consultant and agent for the project, and uh, his response was that he was that they were meeting with the attorney on Friday and he would get back to me after that. Um, as of today, I received an email from the attorney um, asking for a sit down, not only with the consultant and her, but with um, rep uh, owners um, to go over all outstanding items. Um, I have sent, sent an email back and uh, said we staff had a very lengthy meeting with the consultant who, as I said, is indicated to be the agent in the application form. Um, we spent uh, an hour and a half meeting with him going over all the outstanding information. We followed that up with written comments or written notes from the meeting. And so my response back to the attorney being very sensitive to the amount of time that's being consumed on this application. Um, I pointed out to her that we had had that lengthy meeting and suggested that uh, she and her client needed to have a conversation with their consultant um, to see if they could uh, clear things up themselves and supply me with a, um, a list of additional questions they may have uh, that were not answered at that meeting. They have also um, filed a FOIA request, which I have passed on to our, uh, our FOIA officer. Um, so I don't know when you're going to be seeing that one again. Um, <clears throat> I think that's pretty much what I had to add. Molly, do you have anything that you want to make the board aware of? No, not at this time. Thank you. So that's my report. Um, do you have any questions for me or for Molly? Oh, I, I do have one more item. Last night at the city council meeting, uh, the council, <laughs> this is a big one, sorry, I forgot about this. Uh, the council did um, uh, approve the award of the uh, contract for mineral inspection, um, uh, uh, mineral extraction inspections um, to Wright Pierce with CV and Mahar as a backup. Um, should Wright Pierce develop a conflict because they're approached by uh, um, a gravel pit in Sanford and asked to work for them. Um, they did it, but they did it with a, with a condition. And the condition is that the uh, uh, planning board will, um, will provide uh, recommended amendments to the ordinance by March of 2022. Um, there was some follow-up conversation, and I, I honestly don't remember if it happened during the item. It was very late um, after a very long agenda. Um, and uh, I, there was some discussion about treating this the same way that marijuana was treated, the setting up a special task force um, to prepare the ordinance language. Um, obviously, it still has to go through planning uh, board review. Um, and I would assume that there would be an appointment of uh, at least one member of the planning board to that task force. Um, so you may want to be thinking about that. Um, I guess what I'll do it um, sometime in the next meeting or two, depending on how things sort of shake out in the office, uh, I think I'll put it on a work session for general conversation, if that makes sense to you guys. Yeah. And I know that, um, Jack, I think you were at the meeting. And Diane, I think you were there. If you have anything that you want to add to that. Subcommittee meeting? No, this was last night's council meeting. You may not have been there, Jack. Diane, I think, was. And she no, just shook I was her head having dinner. <laughs> <laughs> you might have been having a midnight snack, Jack. It went until after 10. <laughs> I, I can comment a little bit on it, Beth. It was. Uh... Yeah, and Matt was there as well. And as was Dave, Parent, and Jamie, and both Matt and uh, Dave did make comments. Please, Matt. Go ahead and uh, yeah, I mean, it was a unanimous subcommittee recommendation and it ended up being a unanimous vote of the council, but it was, it was one of the like weirdest feeling unanimous votes ever in, in my six years here. It was, <laughs> it seemed like it was really contentious. 
Uh, but in the end, everybody supported it. I was very thankful that was the end result. But it was obvious, like, there's things going on, and uh, which made it weird. That's it. Okay. Are we all set with planning director's I, report then? Oh, I, yeah. I will say, I will say that I, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I, I will just say that at this point, I do not have any um, new business for the first meeting in May. So it might be a good opportunity to have like a nice robust work session. Hmm. Sounds good. Yeah, the only thing I'll add to that is that's dependent upon me being able to do the background work that's necessary. But I think at the very least that the conversation about um, the gravel pits could take place as a work session. Um, uh, and I, I it will not be substantive, I'm assuming. It's likely to be just sort of logistical. Um, but we'll, Molly and I will put our heads together and see if we can uh, come up with something. I just... I don't want to promise you because, for example, I don't, I don't, I'm not prepared for this evening's work session. Um, it has been a very demanding time. I would like to actually, you know, one thing I think I do want to do is put on next week's, uh, the next meeting's work session is I want to share some development uh, permitting statistics with you. Um, I've been holding off on, on shipping those out, but I think that might be a good time to review that. Okay, are we good? Lenny? Yeah. I'd like to bring up something in communications, if I may. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll move into communications now. Go ahead. It's something I noticed tonight. I didn't say anything about it because I felt that it wasn't applicable tonight. Uh, but it's something that's going to go forward. There was something that came up at one of the uh, municipal operations meetings or it was site plan or not site plan review um public safety and it was about um the atvs and it was brought up at the meeting and it's contentious and in one of the applicants um notes he makes mention of atv use and uh, property destruction um i'd like to avoid this kind of um, writing in the future in um, the applicants, with especially with the trails committee. I don't want to get into this kind of back and forth, especially with what's going to come up. Um, you know, he specifically it says uh, such as ATB use. Well, I'm sorry, he's they're. They're calling out one group. Um, I know that snowmobiles make damage. I and I with this this conversation that's going to be coming up with different applications with trails and stuff like that. I don't want to see part of that in the applications. Okay, and that's what I have to say about it. I might add there was the conversation. I, I saw something on the news tonight about something that's happening at the state level. There's something going on yeah. limiting the size of ATVs on trails. So I don't know if Sanford's going to be no, bound it, by that. It, no, it's not limiting the size. It's limiting the building of the size of these things, the side by sides. Mm -hmm. And it came out of a, a representative in China, Maine, that brought that forward. Mm -hmm. I read the article this morning. Um, I was at the meeting where the sub council was talking about this. Um, it's like I said, it's going to be contentious, and um, I don't I don't want to see this brought up, especially what was put in print tonight. Okay, thank you. Okay, is this something coming to the planning board you're talking about? Yeah, it came up tonight in um, the applicants, the second applicants. Um, I guess it would be application. They talk about the the boardwalk footbridge number three and I don't know if it's proper to talk about it after the fact or not well it's a non-motorized trail so ATVs are no. not allowed right but you know in in the past um when I asked them what their definition of non-motorized was they specifically 
pulled out the ATVs. When I said uh, that a snowmobile has a, has a motorized engine, they said, oh, no, that doesn't apply. So I, I don't want to have this conversation going forward with any applications about this. They're, well, they're being snow- very specific and narrow-minded about it. Snowmobiles have a motor, so they are they would not be allowed on those trails. We don't allow snowmobiles or ATVs or dirt bikes on our trails, and that's pretty much what this trail is, should be. Well, if they've changed their mind about that, it's a surprise to me because it has not. Uh, that's not what I've been hearing. Okay. Anything? Anybody want any other comments under communication? I might offer one. Um, I noticed um, Nape store is almost complete. I don't know if you guys have a chance. Maybe take a drive around and take a look at it at the uh, New Dam Road and Grandma Road. Uh, Harry's Convenience Store. It looks pretty good. Looks like they're just about ready to put down the pavement. So it's one of the projects that we voted on a few weeks ago, and it's coming from the fruitation, it looks pretty good. At least a nice addition to that area of, uh, of the town. Uh, Mr. Chair, can I have one more thing, please? Sure. Um, this past week or two, um, Bruce Knight, myself, and the Wainwrights um, were working on a project with the cemetery with uh, help with uh, Beth, um, with Convenient MD. Uh, we went forward this week and ordered a new stone for the cemetery um, through the VA in Washington. Uh, We don't know the outcome just yet. Um, When we were out there marking trees, we came across an abandoned well. Um, And so I just want to let Beth know it's all filled in now with a big mound of dirt. (laughs) Sorry guys, I got got booted out of the call. Um, so update on, well, on convenient MD. Uh, Diane, I had a a question about your comment about the ATVs and not wanting to see this kind of stuff in the application. I'm assuming you're referencing, uh, anything like that coming from staff comments. Because obviously we can't control what an applicant or an abutter or you know somebody who testifies uh, has to say. Um, uh, you would be perfectly within your right to indicate that um, uh, that you don't want to be put in the middle of this contentiousness. Um, but um, certainly, I think it, it's it's uh, your your request is something that uh, I can pass on to staff. I have not heard any language like that coming out of any of our staff associated with development permit review. Um, uh, But like I said, there's nothing I can do to control what comes out of um, somebody testifying at a public hearing or um, submitted submission for a public hearing or um, what an applicant might have to say. I mean, you, you, for example, this evening, you know, Kevin, clearly was not propo- was proposing that no motorized vehicles would be using that trail and, and quite honestly from what i understand that trail's not laid out well for atv use um but you you know he certainly did not say anything derogatory um, he no was a, he put yeah, it in he was, that was my problem with it but yeah. you're right i can't do that but i just don't want the planning board and this is my opinion I don't want the planning board nor staff getting in this in the middle of this crux because we've got another application that's going to come up with this coming up. Yep. yep. So you should know that the reason that Kevin was talking about this is actually staff raised issues about ATV use, not to prohibit it, but to um, if in fact ATVs were going to be using it and going over those footbridges and using the boardwalk then they needed to be designed to a different standard. Um, and so that's really what the conversation was about and going back and forth and why there was this this um, issue of it needing to be posted for no ATVs. Um, uh, the fire marshal and, uh, you know, was uh, by limiting the use to a walking trail, it just, 
it changed the standards that needed to apply to the review of the application, both in terms of the width of some of those uh, facilities, but primarily it had to do with making sure that those footbridges would be structurally sound to take on something um, as heavy as an ATV. Um, yes, I, I, don't think, I don't think there were any biases behind it in terms of what staff was saying and, and what Kevin was responding to. It really had to do with a technical review element. Element. I understand. With this property, of course, you don't want ATVs or anything like that in there. I, I'm 100% for that. But yep. there's, there's some votes that were taken this, at the last trails committee, and a lot of people are very upset right now. Well, I've been watching it happening. Actually, I'm um, I, I get the trails committee committee's emails, and um, and this is you know this has ebbed and flowed over the last three years, um, and then the last blow up um, uh, resulted in the presentation to the uh, the subcommittee that you were talking about. So I've been watching that, but I'm staying out of it, Diane. I got enough yep. trouble. Don't want to have it brought in with the planning board that's all thank you yep okay anything else under communication one thing i would i'll throw one more thing out there um i got my covid shot today i don't know how many other people on the committee have gotten their shot yet but good luck tomorrow lenny there i go i got i got mine set uh, last sunday so if you want to get one it's it, it hurts for about two seconds and then you don't feel anything and it doesn't cost anything. It's easy to get. It's, uh, it's a, it was a very easy process. I went to the old Marshall store. It was very quick and very easy. And hopefully. Yeah, I, second, I was in and out in 30 minutes. It was fantastic. The way that healthcare should be. Am I right? <laughs> it, it was, it was, it was lovely and, and it was easy in, easy out. It was, it was really, really great. So everybody should be encouraged to do it. They should. I think it, it is very good. I got mine on Monday. I'm still feeling it. I feel a little sluggish and everything. A little under the weather, maybe? <laughs> yeah, just a bit. <laughs> I bring that up, too, because it might be one other consideration. If we have, if we were asked to do a site walk in the future, that might be a consideration. If we've all taken the precautions, if we all have our vaccine, uh, a total amount, the maximum amount, whether it's a one-shot or a two-shot deal, uh, that might play into a consideration whether we hold a site walk. We want to make sure that everybody is adequately protected before even considering the schedule such a site walk. So maybe everybody might want to give some thought to that to get a chance. And I'm good. Is everybody else good? Okay, and that last item, the uh, there is no work session tonight, so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. We can all go to bed. Oh, motion to adjourn. Thank you, Jeff. Morning, Thank you. Second. <laughs> Lenny, who's got Third. a second on that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, let's just... Do... We have no, a second. We need to do it. Di Diane? Okay, great. Okay. Um, Lenny? Oh, yes. Jack? Yes. Oliver? Yes. Diane? Yes, ma'am. And Tom? Yes. Wonderful. Motion passes, 5-0. Thank you very much. We will see you guys in a couple of weeks.